Brian. Welcome back to the 700 Club. We're going to jump right in and bring it on with your email questions on health and fitness. And we're going to begin with Jean, who writes in, Pat, yes. I've heard that there are good bacteria in yogurt that can actually be good for your body. What is it and how is it beneficial? Well, you have uh, flora in your intestine that help you digest food. Mm -hmm. And it also helps you ward off certain diseases and so forth. One of the problems with taking antibiotics is that it kills the intestinal flora. It kills everything. The good bacteria, right? The good bacteria. Yeah. So it leaves your gut uh, open to other problems. These, these little babies are in there to defend you. And yes, acidophilus and, uh, and yogurt uh, will help build up a culture. It's essentially the culture of these bugs, but they're good for you. Mm -hmm. And we forget that bacteria can yeah. be good for us. Oh, yeah. The good bacteria. Okay, good Corey bacteria. writes in and says, with all the people getting cancer, I get worried about getting skin cancer. The way some experts talk, it seems like I should never leave my home. I've always loved being outdoors. I don't see my lifestyle changing anytime soon. So what kinds of things should I look for on my skin to keep myself in check? Well, you need to look at certain um, uh, growths that begin to take place, but a lot of those growths are not cancerous. You know, you can get all scared, and some of them are precancerous, and so you need to you need to check. But if you stay out in the sun all the time in bright, uh, penetrating sun, you get burned. Uh, after a while, you might get a serious cancer. But uh, that's the melanoma type. But the uh, so many of the uh, uh, cancers or skin lesions that you have aren't really life-threatening. The doctor can just cut them off, and that's the end of mm -hmm. it. So, but what should you look for? Well, you, uh, you should put on some kind of a heavy sunscreen mm -hmm. when you go out in the sun, and you just shouldn't expose yourself for so long to open sun because you will, might get something. But uh, I don't think it's near as bad as... Some people think, but I, I, I do believe that the ozone layer has uh, been compromised. You know, they see it uh, down at the South Pole going away. And I, I think that um, if we stay out in current uh, heat conditions, um, there are things that happen to your skin that didn't used to happen 30, 40 years ago. So I think you need to be careful. What? Mm. That's true. Right. George writes in and George says spinach, peanut butter products and even dog food have all been recalled in the past year because of contamination. Why do you think this is happening? And I thought there were agencies to protect us from these types of problems. That's true, Pat. What do you think about that? Well, we bring in stuff from Mexico, for example, but there's no excuse in this uh, this peanut processing thing. Uh, yesterday, we had the CEO of Smithfield Foods talk to uh, a group of leadership at Regent University. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was talking about how enormously careful they are. He said, we don't have room for 1% um, problems. It's got to be 100% right. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are on that stuff constantly to make sure that there's no contamination. Obviously, it doesn't take much salmonella. These, these bugs will grow in the terms of billions in a matter of a few hours. So uh, if they get out of hand, you have to have a screening process all the time. Where do they come from? I don't know. I think some of the salmonella has come from um, vegetables and other things we import from overseas. And they're not as careful as we are. But nevertheless, it's, it's easy to get them. I mean, in your own refrigerator, you can grow salmonella. So you just have to be very careful. Hmm, I know that. Right. Okay, Will writes in and Will says, Pat, I found out that I'm at a high risk for heart failure. What do you suggest for lowering my risk level? <laughs> I don't know what your risk, your risk is. But I, I think the first thing you ought to do is... Uh, uh, get some kind of an angiogram to take a look and see where the, the uh, not just listen to somebody say you're at a high risk, but uh, they can go into your arteries and see if there are any blockages. Next thing to do is to take fish oil, I mean, maybe a teaspoon or two of cod liver oil or something like that uh, uh, twice a day um, to cut down your consumption of fatty meat, uh, eat chicken and turkey and lots and lots of vegetables and fruit and take uh, vitamins. I, I don't know what else to tell you, except uh, uh, there's certain things that will slow down. I'm a great fan with dark chocolate. You Me know. too, Pat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I am. There's a difference between dark chocolate and milk chocolate. Dark chocolate is the kind that tastes a little sour, but you can get something called Baker's Cocoa that you put in, in hot water, 
makes a nice drink, but it opens up your heart, your arteries, and keeps you a little healthier. But I'd monitor that stuff. There are all kinds of tests. You can have a test for C-reactive protein. You can have a test for homocysteine. And every few months, you should let some medical person draw some blood and have it analyzed to see where you are, whether you've got excess cholesterol, whether you've got, uh, you know, your lipid pro profile is what it's supposed to be. But especially look for C-reactive protein and look for homocysteine, and, and that'll give you a clue as to how bad you are. But you're not probably as bad as everybody says. Works for me. You have it. <laughs> no, I do. All right. What's your homocysteine profile? Listen, brother, I can't even say it, let alone spell it, let alone know what it is. So, right, well, <laughs> so far, so good. You're young. Don't worry about it. Right. Ned writes in and says, I'm 64 years old and in good health for my age. I recently joined a health club to help me stay in shape. Do you think it's safe to use the hot tub? I'd like to, but I'm worried about contagious diseases, especially at my age. That, that if you were 25, you'd still ought to stay out of those hot tubs. They're nasty. They're breeding ground. Oh, brother. Oh. You never can tell who's yeah. gotten in there and what they've got on them. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy to get a skin rash or something like that mm -hmm. sitting around in those, those steamy hot rooms. It's just a breeding ground for bugs. If you want a hot tub, buy one and put it in your house. I'm with you. All right. Don't get me started on that one. Okay. All right. Connor writes in and says, I'm a sports enthusiast, and I developed toenail fungus about a year ago. Hmm. The fungus went away, but now it's back again. Does this indicate some sort of a larger health problem? I'd like to prevent infections like this in the future. I don't think it's any larger health problem, but uh, Connor, I'm not a doctor, so I can't advise you pursue it, certainly. But they, <laughs> there are preparations you can take to kill that stuff, and you ought to find out from maybe a pharmacist what it is that causes it to come back. But um, you can get something, a cream to put on it and, uh, you know, take care of yourself. But uh, uh, it means you need um, good hygiene in relation to foot care. You need to, you know, wash them, bathe them, and, and if need be, get some kind of a, a bacterial preparation to, you know, put on your toes. But I'm not a doctor, so I don't know if there's anything else that would cause that to come back. But infections do come back. That's true. Can't help you on the foot fungus one, Pat. I can help you on other stuff like chocolate, but I can't help you with that one. I, I've got no clue. Okay. <laughs> I've never had it. Okay. All right. Well, listen, I just want to remind you that if you do uh, want to email Pat a question, all you have to do is just log on to CBN.com and just throw your questions to him. He loves to answer them.